So you're exhausted from standing for hours, moving about your emptied out living space, or you gotta put furniture back in place for some reason and simply don't have the room to play as you'd like. It's time to wind down and play something a little more chill, something you can play while sitting. The following games are, in my opinion, the cream of the crop when it comes to sitting experiences. So let's start off with the oldies but goodies. First up is Thumper, one of the very first games I'd ever played in VR. The demo was available in the PSVR demo disc that came with the peripheral, and man did that sell me on the game, as well as VR in general. The game is a third person rhythm game where you watch a beetle skating down a track making sure you hit all the corners of the track on beat, or hitting the designated buttons at the right time. The first level starts off simple enough, but as the levels go on it gets more and more complex and really gives you a run for your money. This thing gets tough. But the cool thing is that the graphics really remind me of Samurai Jack in a very positive way. I love how creepy and inventive the interactive backgrounds are and the bosses that you have to fight. The game is so awesome and is highly, highly recommended if you like rhythm games. Next up is Moss. Proven to be one of the best games for PSVR and then well received during its port to PC, and the game still holds up fantastically on Quest. The game follows the tale of a young mouse named Quill as you go through a storybook fantasy world in third person, as you control Quill through some interesting puzzles, 3D platforming, and action-adventure combat. The story takes roughly 4 hours to beat, it's not super long, but the quality is what makes this game worth the price. I love the aesthetic of the game, and I also love third person platformers. I've said before and I'll say it again, third person VR is just as much the future of gaming as first person VR. Some of my favorite games in VR have been in third person, and Moss is no exception. VR is the future of controller couch gaming. Mark my words. If you like 3D platformers from the N64 and PS1 era of gaming, Moss is a definite buy. Next is Angry Birds Isle of the Pigs, the tried and true bubble game Angry Birds brought to life in VR. Honestly, I thought this one would go the way of Fruit Ninja and just be a janky piece of shovelware unworthy of purchasing, but it actually held up pretty well. I'd never really gotten into Angry Birds on mobile because I don't generally play mobile games, but I actually had a lot of fun with this version. There's hundreds of levels, each pretty unique in their own right, providing hours of enjoyment for anyone who's particularly fond of the Angry Birds puzzle gameplay format. There are some tracking issues here and there, but I think it has to do with the fact that you're required to hold the controller so close to your face to use the slingshot. The last two on the list are honorable mentions, as I cannot suggest them in their current states. First honorable mention is PokerStars VR. The 20 minutes I was actually able to play were a lot of fun. The mechanics are very much what you'd expect from poker, so that was comforting, and they added a few little props to lighten the mood a bit, like a pipe, a lighter, or a rubber duck, and the like. I like that the game gravitated towards a more adult audience, so the atmosphere was just a bunch of dudes just casually sitting around and seriously playing poker. I didn't encounter any trolls or obnoxious people on voice chat, which was refreshing for an online game. Then again, I only played 20 minutes, so who's to say that wasn't a fluke? The reason I wouldn't recommend the game in its current state, as I kind of alluded to already, is that it's very buggy. The game froze maybe 4 times in the hour that I put into it and crashed twice, where I had to reboot the game completely. Not a good look. So I suggest waiting for an update, which I'm sure is coming, as the game is currently unplayable. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt though, because it is a free to play game, but come on. Why would you release something in this condition? Who knows? The second honorable mention is a short interactive film called Bonfire. The game, if you want to call it that, experience, was very well written and cute for what it was. It did a great job of involving you to interact with the world and make decisions as the story played along. However, I was not expecting it to be a measly 10 minute experience. For an experience that costs $10, it is most certainly not worth that price, as much longer and higher quality games release for around that price. And it kind of leaves a bad taste. You can replay the story and pick different options, so maybe I'll say it's about a 20 minute experience in that regard. So while this experience was charming and something everyone should try, most definitely wait until the price drops to maybe $5. It's strange too because I was expecting it to be free, since their previous VR experience Invasion was completely free. But that's a list of the best quest experiences that you can find today where you're sitting on your buttocks. If you like the video, give it a big ol' thumbs up and help the channel grow, and if you want to see what's cooking up next, consider subscribing.
A link to my Twitter is in the description below. It is also pinned as a comment, so go ahead and follow me over there if you want to see what's going on. But as always, I love you all, and I will see you in the next video.